Hello and welcome to the Skaz and Mo Show Woo-hoo. as <laughs> in partnership as ever with our friends at Vodafone. And if you can't already tell by the name change, we are Elmerless again. Flying solo. We are flying so solo. So if you normally tune in for intelligent questioning, aggressive South African tones, <laughs> a crazy cat lady, this just we won't be the show for you. It's just going to be pure chaos. But um, yeah. Mo yeah. and I are here and we're going to try and steer the ship as best we can. 100% with absolutely tons to talk about. First off, GB coming third in sevens in perfect so good. weekend. So good, especially like after how much they've got funding wise and everything like that. Back in camp. We we're back in England camp this week. You we were, were in for a day. Buzzing you were in for three. It. Yeah, we were in for three. <laughs> <laughs> and Lions Tour. And we've been tasked with a hella task, eh? We'll come on to that later. Okay, perfect. Because it's an absolute minefield. But I think the best place to start is with the biggest news of all. (laughs) And I know you'll shoot me down because it needs to go through Parliament or get passed by Council or whatever these things need to happen. Stop it. But there could be a Natasha Hunt leisure centre, sports Sports facility in the Forest of Dean. That's, That's cool. It's mad, isn't it? You had a mural or whatever it was. A (laughs) mural. I swear (laughs) to God. (laughs) <laughs> you had a Muriel and they're actually maybe naming something after me. No, it's crazy. Um, is, like so is it built? No, it's being built. So, so they're looking to name the whole thing as it's a brand new yeah. facility. Ironically as well, it's where I used to um, lifeguard when I was growing up. So I used to play, do like my tennis lessons there, lifeguard. I'm pretty sure mum was there. And it's, you know where mum used to work at school, Berry Hill? It's literally like next to that. So it's like super cool. Then even just to have the consideration of the name it's like one guy who's like really pushing it but just the fact that he's even thought of it is epic. i was thinking about this on my way in go on and i you know how there's always like a, a cafe in a leisure center yeah yeah so i reckon it should be called monumentous so that you know like when when you haven't like gone for a hit with your mate playing tennis and you're like oh what are you doing for us today oh no not yeah, much should we go for a coffee at monumentous i don't know how much the kids weight. coming out of their swimming lesson <laughs> mom dad <laughs> mom dad can we go get some chocolate from monumentous <laughs> how good what? I don't know how much weight I've got to add <laughs> anything at all to this whole thing. Like, basically, one man just rang me, he, legend, Tim, rang me and just said, do you mind if I put forward the notion? And I was like, of course I don't mind, but I'm a little bit speechless. But yeah, very cool. All right, Go well, if Monument Tim needs any more ideas, um, then I'm here for it. Sorry, I actually think, I thought you were about to say the biggest news of the weekend, which was the fact that you got gifted a weekend away. Oh, yeah, I thought that was the big news. <laughs> <laughs> so, for everyone listening... Basically, got this group chat, popped up Jam Weekend Away, and I thought, epic, like, what's this all about? Obviously, Skazzy's spoken to me before about it, and um, puts on there, oh, yeah, um, I've been asked to, if I want to have a weekend away with some of my friends, all paid for, food paid for, drinks paid for, drinks weren't paid for, sorry, I'm exaggerating. Drinks weren't paid for, they yeah, knew what we were going to be like. pretty much. <laughs> and um, Amy Kokale, who's also in this group, just replied, your life is different. <laughs> And I thought, it really is. But you guys gave me so much stick, but I've never, ever, ever been gifted anything like that before in my entire life. And <laughs> a weekend away, never been gifted yeah, a weekend away. I was away. just thinking of the things you have been gifted and I thought, hashtag ad, what should we get into? But that's no, fine. But Carry the, on. But the point is, there is no ad with it because they didn't ask for anything other than a <laughs> little review post. And we're all trying desperately <laughs> to put some reels together. <laughs> To showcase how lovely it was. But how nice a weekend I was wish it? I wish I was because it's <laughs> actually so hard to mock just you. But, guys, oh, yesterday on the group, so we said that we were all going to try and put this reel together. So <laughs> I, like, showed them, <laughs> literally had my phone. And I was like, I'll do it really quickly while we eat eating Sunday lunch before we left this resort. The mall resort, by the way. Let's the give context them a shout of this out. is the... Other than you, the other four of us are complete social media dinosaurs. Mm, not no, really, we are. Not as bad as you. But anyway, so we're having a lovely roast just before we leave. And I was like, oh, I'll just throw one together just so you can see. So obviously went on to templates of the reels and um, put it all together, just added a load of photos. And the girls were like, how have you done that? And I literally had to get my phone, show them Instagram reels, show them all of the bits that you could add to it. And I swear to God, the one that Skaz put on your first <laughs> attempt last night, I lost my head. I actually lost my head. It was rolling. Because we we said we'd all have a, a go, <laughs> didn't we? So then the girls were putting them on the group. And to be fair, Keats and... Is it Amy's? Amy's and was very good. Mm. They were all very good. I did mine super quick. I didn't understand where the music went. I thought it was supposed to have music on it, and then it just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally like, photo, 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 photo. <laughs> but yeah, very cool. But anyway, watch this space. In about two months' time, you might see a reel of... Didn't f- you post it? Our funny... Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> she was trying to find it to send it us and she actually posted it so i reckon about 12 people probably more than got a little pop-up to say skaz has posted in a while i panicked so hard i put aeroplane mode on immediately and i was like <laughs> if it, as long as it doesn't send then it will be okay but yeah. so very good no we'll um we're all trying to just get better in life with these things such a nice place though and also getting up for the sun sunrise which I wasn't fully bought into, but meant that we could watch a lot of the Sevens, which was pretty cool. We did watch nearly all of the Sevens. Yeah. Um, how good? Ireland as well. Oh, first ever win in Australia against Australia. And also word for the GB girls, like on the flip of that, not really getting any time together. What are they, like one week in every month? So unreal. Like some of the girls pre-Sydney training in minus condition, doing running on their own, not passing a rugby ball. And then to come together, beat Australia in Australia on Australia Day. How good. Class. How good. So good. <laughs> and then obviously to go and get third in a tournament like that, I think is just remarkable for them. Yeah, I don't think the Aussies were too happy about it, were they? <laughs> and then losing in the final. But yeah, super cool for them. Super cool for Ireland. What else has been going on? Been in camp? Yeah, camp. No, it's been cool. It's been really good. Um, Back in, what was it? Fitness testing camp. But ironically, I didn't actually fitness test one bit because no. I had whiplash in my neck. Couldn't do that. Don't give me that. You're one of those that pulled that up shit. day before. Don't it's give funny me that, that shit because I literally hate <laughs> it. You know what I'm like. Um, but yeah, couldn't do my neck. Couldn't do my hammy. Had a l- tweak in my hammy. And then I couldn't even do my 1200 because my ankle. So, so you didn't do any of the fitness testing? Didn't do anything. Nothing. Fitness. But the worst thing about that is it's all hanging over me. So it's not like I'm not going to do it. I've just got to do it at a later date. Mm. So you, that's been... So since we left in WXV... Mitch basically gave us all a photo of ourselves in kit. And I don't know whether... Did he? Yeah. Have I not told you this? No. So basically, he, co- he shook everyone's hand at the end of um tournament and we all had this envelope. And in it, he'd printed out a photo. And it was like... Mine was black and white. I'm not sure if everyone's was black and white. But us in our playing kit. And was just like, I want this to be your driver. Like, basically, because our fitness and our our bodies, our asset, that's our new thing. So, like, we've got to be, like, really good with that sort of stuff. Um, so that's up in my kitchen. So, I so see as in the picture day. is the motivation, not yeah. change this picture. No, no, no. I don't yeah, think yeah. so. I think it's just like <laughs> not really you're sure. like at the old before and after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe. Who knows? How was the injury? What was the scan? What's the latest? Injury's good. Um, I don't know if you saw Sadia's Instagram <laughs> oh recently. Oh my god! Can she's we, like, she's a nightmare. Is there any way we can like tag this? To I don't know. Um, she's a nightmare because obviously social media isn't my my thing I generally don't put a huge amount out there and then obviously she just puts her big face in front of me doing uh, basically I've just got all these neck strengthening things naturally like you'd strengthen anybody do you want part. me to describe it or go you on gonna... you describe it so you've got like this helmet I'm gonna call it a helmet you're a helmet it's a halo it's a halo you've got a halo on okay a massive halo that covers your whole entire forehead that's yeah. about that thick yeah it looks like you know gladiators when they wear their big head guards that yeah. but like triple in size yeah. so imagine it out here and up here no need to imagine it i was wearing it no i know but <laughs> for people that don't know i'm really doing my best to describe and then you've got a massive rope there's probably like Bungie the size, cord, actually. size of a tug of war rope sorry this is my <laughs> <tug of war. laughs> this is my interpretation of it so just bear with <laughs> and on the end of it a massive ball so you can like hold on to it and then someone's just running around your head while you're trying to stand static not just someone a prop yeah cv strong girl <laughs> cv rag in your head and you're yeah. just stood there like this <laughs> basically <laughs> sorry no can we clip that up whatever that was <laughs> That's going to be a gift and you're going to hate your life. Should have eyes straight down the <laughs> camera for it. Very good. Yeah, it's basically just multi-directional. But um, that's nuts. Reaction, like, reactive. She's literally hanging off your neck. It is a bungee. So it, it, there is giving it. Like when she pulls it, there's giving the bungee rope. Yeah, I understand what bungee yeah, is. Yeah, thank you. Well, just <laughs> you tug a war in, so it was just making sure. It was It was just the way that it happened. And like If that yeah. happened to me, I think I don't think I'd be able to sustain that. We need to get to on the next strengthening yeah. program, though. So Pop. how far are you back on pitch training with the girls? Yeah, back on pitch training, still like non-contact, but doing my own bits of contact stuff. So, you know, the classic learning to fall, tackling from your knees, <laughs> hitting knees, a bag, hip, shoulder. Head. Yeah, you got it. Handing off. So, very gradual, but getting there slowly. There is a return date, but there's still a lot to fill in in the middle. So I'm not being crazy open about it. 
So you're going to tell us the return date or? No. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Still off a air. lot to go. Maybe off air. Maybe off air. Lovely. It's not, a, mil- very it's not a million though. miles off, but it's not imminent. Amazing. You're welcome. Yeah, perfect. That is a classic Skaz answer. I didn't expect anything more. <laughs> but how fun. Yeah. So the rugby world is going to go wild because the, the return of Emily Scarrett is not a million miles off, to use your but words. But not imminent. But not imminent. <laughs> Hold this space. <laughs> Hopefully not before Gloucester Hart replays Loughborough, are they? Well, we'll see. We'll is that see. the aim? I would be fuming if you've been out for how long? Two years. Two years. Honest to God, <laughs> you and your <laughs> exaggerations, it's unbelievable. You've it's been out two years and then you come 14 back. 14 months. Round it up. And you come back for <laughs> <laughs> for Gloucester Heart Ruby Love, bro. That game's not till like May, is it? Anyway, we're talking a load of rubbish now. Okay, um, Mitch. Yep. How, there's a few nice things that you've said about him. How's he getting on? What's the vibe? I only met him for the first time. He came to Loughborough a couple of weeks ago, met him for the first time. Really good first impression. And then obviously was in camp for a day, but you obviously know him a lot better than I do. Yeah, well, you say a lot better. I think Maud knows him the best because every aeroplane ride between New Zealand, oh, she was in the sat next, next to him. Yeah, <laughs> but he actually he actually messaged her when they got home being like, missing our aeroplane chats, Maud. And I just thought, that's so lush. That's so cute. I'm just a massive fan, to be honest. Like, I just think atmosphere is great, like you've seen. But I just think he gets people and that's something that is huge for me. Like, I know that I've said it a few times. I think, I don't know if I've ever said to you about when he pulled me in the corridor. Sounds dodgy, isn't dodgy? Yeah, yeah. go on, keep telling the story um, quickly. Basically, like, just tapped me on the shoulder and was like, can we have a word before that Canada game in WXV? And um, he just said to me, he was like, why are you in your own head? Like, we're committed to you. We, like, we're invested in you. We just want you to, like, go out and show what you can do, that sort of thing. And I And I was literally like after three days of watching me train, how have you got me so right already? Do you know what I mean? It just it just made me feel really comfortable and settled and stuff. Um, and I just think he's done it for a lot of people. It's not just me that he's had conversations like that with. He's had a few where he's pitted people against each other, but that's the right thing for them. And they're really excited about that. He's had a few where he's told people like where they're at and what they need to do. And he's just really clear with everyone, but I feel like he knows how to get the best out of each of us which is massive for us as a squad. And also like that competition bit as well, because he's fresh eyes coming in and what's always been isn't what's always going to be. Yeah. And I think that's huge. But it's for super important, like isn't it? Yeah, massive. I love, I mean, you appreciate you've just been super nice about him, but I love how you think that you hide things really well. <laughs> that's what I took out of that. He's only known me for three days and he just got me straight away. Yeah, but You're the I'm most heart on your sleeve girl you could come across. When I'm training and that, like, <laughs> really that bad? <laughs> Like, when I'm training, you can actively see I'm in well, my own head. yeah, maybe not. Terror. But funny. No, but if that is a thing, you need to let me know, because... <laughs> <laughs> re- yeah, we won't even go there, I don't mean. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Heart on the sleeve's not a bad thing anyway, so... No, it's not. Everyone knows where they stand. Mm. Um, should we change change tack a little bit? Um, talk about Streety. <sighs> Obviously, one England head coach to a, a former one, obviously going through some really difficult times at the moment. For those who don't know, um, Gary Street suffered a stroke whilst having heart surgery, I think. And obviously a huge, big recovery from that. Um, part of it is to do with speech rehabilitation as well as obviously physical rehabilitation. Um, and he's due to be discharged, I think, from hospital very soon, at which point his care will stop. I think there's a huge waiting list. Yeah, two um, years. Yeah, in terms of the um support that he needs yeah and the the right people to do that so there's a gofundme page set up uh that if you search streets ahead that you should be able to to find and support obviously we're huge fans of street he was our the cap us both he defo capped me did he cap yeah me? he yeah. capped me as well so he was kind of the first <clears throat> well the first senior coach to i guess get a give hold us of us chance. give us an opportunity um He's, yeah. an, he's a, a brilliant man, isn't he? Obviously, uh, he was our World Cup winning coach as well. But I think the, the biggest thing irrelevant of all the rugby stuff is his energy and his... Um, um Obviously, send in all our love to Flip and the boys. And if you can donate, please do. Go for me, streets ahead. I also think, I spoke to Alex Payne, hopefully I can say this, the other day. And the part of the Black Eye Gin Fund and all of the good things that that does with the £1.50 of every um, bottle, bottle being sold going into the 
players fund and the hardship fund etc some of that money is going to go to streeties oh, gofundme amazing. page which i thought was awesome and exactly why the boys are doing what they're doing yeah and obviously a brilliant a brilliant start to that class so Help big love them. big love to streety and flip and all of the boys 100%. um so moving on should we start should we do it yeah i'm nervous i'm flipping nervous well we just talk about it first the lions obviously Epic. it's been announced it's happening 27 down in new zealand go where do you start what like, are you where buzzing <laughs> yeah absolutely buzzing i think did it make your knees and hips creak at the thought of a it? A little bit, a <laughs> little bit. But also, like, I think I was quite set on potentially when I might have stopped playing the game. And, you know, when there's just that little chink that you're like, ah, oh, do you have it in you? So what are your thoughts? Are you, so you, are you still, no, you're I, keeping your hat in the ring no, for now? No, I'm not. But you're not taking it out. Don't take it out, I don't think. I'm not taking it out. I'm not taking it out. I think mine's out. Say. Is it? <laughs> yeah, but you've had a little break. This is gonna re- a little break. <laughs> two years, two year break. Two year this, break. Is gonna, this is this is gonna like regenerate you. Do you not think? Well, we'll see. I think it's important to never say never. Mm. But I also, what, what, what would we be? Thirty seven and thirty eight. I would have loved it. Just in be. case anyone's under any any illusion, Mo's older. Mo will be thirty eight. I would be thirty eight. Would I? Thirty seven. In 2027. Okay, let's not work it out. You'll be 38 because I'll be 27. How old was Summer? I'll be 38. 37. Oh my God. I'll be 37. Hello, You'll be 38. <laughs> <laughs> How old was Sarah Hunter? Sorry, I really struggle with these sofas. They're so deep. Like, Your feet don't I, touch the floor? No, they don't. Like, If I sit back, it's a bit of a nit, do you know? Where do you want to be? I don't know. Do you want to sit on the table? <laughs> yeah, shy. Yeah, cross-legged on the floor? <laughs> straight legged they can't do cross legs <laughs> knees and hips anyway yeah, you're making 2027 yeah um <laughs> yeah no we'll be we'll be 37 and 38 this is a bit self-indulgent but i personally don't think we'll do it no i know but anyway um, moving on from that such a cool opportunity how epic i feel like it's been spoken about i can't even remember when that feasibility study came out how long i feel ago like that? it was a couple of years ago yeah Obviously, Vodafone. Vodafone, a huge part of doing that, which, which was awesome. Class, because I think that's one of the biggest reasons why this whole thing's happened. Because we need to know as well, Lions is a business. Like, they're doing it because they think that there's something in it and they're going to make money from it, which is amazing. Because obviously, we know that women's sport is on the rise. But actually, for someone of that magnitude to say, yeah, like, this is going to be something class well essentially they're a business the feasibility study was to see if it is feasible for a business to do that and sorry, the, thank you and the answer is yes <laughs> sorry i'm just repeating what you said but like <laughs> <laughs> but in a way where people understand it <laughs> this is our relationship ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> no but that's that's the outcome isn't it it yeah. is feasible it's happening i think for me like obviously as a huge rugby fan as many people are the lions is it was always the untouchable as a female playing rugby but it was always something that i loved watching kind of on my bucket list to maybe go and tour 100%. should we tour together when we were when we as, were a, as supporters yeah. that'd be class sick but now it's an actual realistic opportunity for obviously girls to play in people to be on that tour to go and watch it crazy so good so good like it happened with the olympics didn't it and we never thought that was ever going to be a thing in our lifetime or you could never actually aspire to be an olympian playing rugby and now it's the same thing and i just think that whole team gb element is class like that i know in 2016 we didn't have a lot of people from different nations but it was a very different experience in 2020 building into that tokyo games and that was genuinely some of my most enjoyable time playing the game because you meet new people like it's a completely different like culture and everything like you know what it's like you've got half the scottish team at, at loughborough how many times have you done a Kaylee in your life like you just don't ex- i love it <laughs> exactly it's pretty much my national dance <laughs> but now. you don't experience it because it's like the different cultures do you know what i mean and i just think it's it's so cool for the game for everything and, and what you can aspire to be like you said class how on earth right who's the coach because how on earth <laughs> do you pick god you've gone there already no but like just how do you even begin to do that i struggle picking a bucks team <laughs> let alone <laughs> let alone trying to get four <laughs> nations into one i do think well i i don't actually even know how and who picks the coach but i think that's that's then a huge part of the whole makeup of it and then what the squad looks like but let's not get too ahead of ourselves yeah, fine, sorry. just yet get excited, don't um we? i think it'll be really interesting to see um what the support bit looks like because obviously new zealand world cup unreal 
then obviously when you guys went back for WXV, argue, probably a bit like what well, yeah. was disappointing yeah, by all accounts in terms of, of crowds and stuff yeah. and how it was supported. I think one really interesting thing for me on the Lions is we were there in 2017. We were playing as England when the men's Lions team were there touring New Zealand. And the atmosphere, not even at games, but the atmosphere just around, around the, place, the city yeah. or wherever we were was unreal. And largely because of the traveling Lions supporters um, and how they come together as a, a like a little Collective, yeah. um, kind of British Isles team as well. Um, but I, I just think that would be quite interesting for potentially the women's and how that's supported both from the New Zealand public but also potentially what travellers travelling fans we get do you not think there'll be many I don't know I just think it's um I mean if I was a women's rugby fan that would be now I've got two years to think about it that's what I would be going for 100% I'd be doing an Elmer and buying everything red I could possibly <laughs> find the other thing if you're thinking like logically about this as I tend to do like Brit Britain and Ireland won't have to spend money really on going to to support a world cup so you can just save all that money what did you say so like <laughs> you know britain like, and ireland as in the british and irish lions so as in the people that would support right let me break this down <laughs> <I'm so laughs> confused. england wales ireland and scotland yeah, fans I know who yeah because the, the world cup in 25 is in england they oh, don't have to spend a huge amount yeah. of money if they want to go and support that yeah so therefore, maybe can we can afford to travel in 27 to New Zealand. Whereas so obviously true. two years ago, our families, those that were able to be out there, travelling to New Zealand, Spenny, don't have to do that this time around. Yeah, so true. I was just thinking about it, you know, from a pocket money point of view. <laughs> Always the logic. Um, <laughs> Always the logic, Scans. <laughs> Representation of four nations. Mm -hmm. So obviously this has been one of the big talking points in terms of everyone a lot of people have just gone oh, well it would just be a red roses team blah, blah 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 blah. that made me mad go on no that made me mad because i saw all over insta to be fair all over insta i saw one post that made me a little <laughs> bit mad there she is there you go um <laughs> and i just thought you, you know it's really important to generalize when you just see one thing yeah, it's really no, important sorry, sorry. It's really important <laughs> <laughs> and again the logic um yeah i just thought like I didn't understand a lot of the the argument for it. So the fact that it was just going to be Red Roses, the fact that we're just jumping on the back of the, what the men do, all of this sort of stuff. And I'm like, but there's been studies. Like there's the feasibility stuff. It It is going to be something. And it's they've decided to do it because there's been like two or three years work to get to this point to say, actually, it's a really good thing and it's going to be great. It's not just jumping on the back of what the men do. Also, it's a hell of a thing. Like... As an English, Irish, Scottish or Welsh player, there we are. Well done, eh? <laughs> Britain and <laughs> Ireland, good job, good job. Like, you actually have the opportunity to come together and to be part of this history. And like you said, it's so incredible. And we've grown up and that's like the biggest thing. Obviously, World Cup's huge and representing your country at a World Cup is massive and has always been the biggest thing. But like, you see it with the boys. Like, they all want that Lions jersey. They all want the opportunity to go and do that because it almost feels a bit bigger than that and negatively shooting it down for me without like massive basis behind it i was like what <laughs> this is epic why have we why have we got to be negative about everything in life like just be happy that it's happening do you know I'm, sorry yeah, ran over with you well here we go <laughs> um i think the other thing as well obviously it's in 27 so we've got three years if you th maybe think back you rewind three years where us as all those uh, four nations were at and where potentially some of the nations have got to now in terms of their own development individually and as a team 100%. it's huge three years is such a long period of time with a world cup with professional contracts now in all of those unions some of them knew we we knew how long it took for them to really start making a difference to us it's not one two years it's no, you know three four five and kicking on so i think in three years time it will be a lot different and also just this is i'm not going to claim this producer shira yeah legend. in 2017 only two scots went on the men's lines tour no one was kicking off a fuss at that point so there the will be differences there's not going to be an equal number of every nation represented in however big that squad will be but we have to accept that that is okay it will nudge unions in the right direction it will continue to push the game forward and also ultimately it needs to be the the best lines team representing all of us not a token 10 from every nation or whatever it might be couldn't agree more and i think that's the most important thing and also 
like how do you pick that what is the best Lions team I think there's a lot of te- like we're going to get into the team discussion in a minute but there's a lot of people that are right on the fence or there's a lot of people that probably playing ability wise they're super super close but for me having gone to like Olympics and stuff like that there is so much to be said that one again. yeah I know sorry there's but there's so much to be said for <laughs> people like good people and people that are going to gel the team and the off-field stuff as well as the on-field stuff and I think it's so important that that gets looked at because you know what it's like like we've obviously been so lucky we've been no sappuccinos no exactly but we've been so lucky we've been full-time for a while and you look at the one percenters now but like you said three years for ever nations to catch up to it and I hope that Ireland invest and they are at a point where we know all of their girls and they've got time to be able to to stay in that trajectory as well. <coughs> but most people will be pretty much like for like by that point with those one percenters. I think there's oh, a couple. Spicy. I think there's a couple of things. Who the coaching staff are mm-hmm. in terms of considering potentially who they pick, but then also you n- you know you know you're picking a team to face New Zealand. You know what it's like in your Gloucester team and in Eng- and the England team. You tweak teams based on the opposition that you're facing because of certain characteristics or things you want to go after or ways you want to play the game. So we know we're playing New Zealand. We know their DNA. So actually you also have to build a team around that a little bit as well. What would you go? Should we do it? No, but would you go physicality? Would you go moving ball ability? Is that even a word? Moving ball ability? I don't think it is a word. But Come I think on, we, Scars. I Come think on, Coach Scars. I do think we all understand what you're saying, but I don't think... Come on, Coach Scars. Get I think, off the fence. I think you have to... Um, you have to go physicality that's just a given in our game at the moment but I also think you have to go pace tempo pace and tempo <laughs> Full pace, stop. pace pace and tempo speed 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 and pace yeah exactly <laughs> get RB in as the coach gosh Litchfield little get a little Litchfield number are we doing it come on then okay can so, you do the disclaimer first okay. <clears throat> please huge disclaimer I love that you've gone straight down, down the barrel this. this is what Elmer does she yeah. turns pauses turns <laughs> we are going to attempt to pick a Lions team based on if we we're picking it to play tomorrow and injuries don't count so hit us with all the hate however this is so difficult there is only 15 people going to be in it and therefore we c- we're just sorry we're sorry to everyone everyone who disagrees everyone who didn't make the team <laughs> But what I do urge you to do is try it yourself because it is bloody hard. We've had help from Scotty, so Rachel Malcolm from Scotland, Fionn Lewis from Wales and Sam Monaghan from Ireland, as well as obviously the two of us. So we've tried to get an unbiased selection of people from all of the nations and varying positions because if we're honest, picking a front row for Mo and I is incredibly difficult. Excuse you. Um, <laughs> sorry, scrum coach. Um, <laughs> so look, we're just going to give it a go. But as I say... Just yeah. minefield. Minefield. There we are then. Number one. <laughs> Number one. No, no, you had a good no, idea. I think. You did have a good idea. I think it's important to start with the bankers. Mm-hmm. So like people that every single body we've spoken to has picked yeah. and therefore will be in the team. And I don't think anybody probably would disagree with, although I'm sure they will. Um, <laughs> and then we'll build around that. Perfect. Happy? Yeah. So I think everybody has agreed... Number three, Sarah Byrne. Everyone has, yep. Am I, am I writing as you? I think, did you want me to write? You said your handwriting wasn't very good. Yeah, you can write. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let me just get my leopard print pen. Hold Love on. that. You just wanted to get your leopard print pen on camera. I know. Okay. Yeah, so Sarah Byrne, number three, is one that everyone's gone for. I don't think anyone will be surprised either that Zoe Allcroft is in the second row. We're just moving on that quick, are we? Oh wait, yeah. I don't know. Do, we do you want to chat about it or what? No, yeah, just rattle through. Let's rattle through. We can go through the bankers and then. Okay. Yeah. Who was next? Al Matthews. No, Zoe Allcroft. Zoe Allcroft. Where are you playing her? Because that's probably the only thing we need to discuss. Because everyone's picked her, former World Player of the Year, the absolute nuts. But where are you putting player her? Player and a half. Second row, no. Second row, yeah. Well, for me, I think you could play her at eight as well. And six. You could play her at six as well, yeah. I think we put her at second row. Okay. Do you disagree? I think I'm not going to argue with you, am I? Perfect. Perfect. I don't know the difference between four and five, so we just put she in a four. She plays four. I do know the difference. Obviously, one's a tight headlock, but... Yeah. The bigger second row normally goes behind the three, because it gives you a bit more weight. <laughs> Thank you, mate. But I don't know anything about scrum, so what would I know? Well... <laughs> okay, next up. Alex Matthews. Mm-hmm. 
she's again been so she's in the two teams she's in our, all of our teams she is but Fionn and Scotty do we have can we call her Scotty yeah Rachel Malcolm is Scotty for everyone she's that doesn't Scotty. know she's a Scottish one in case that was <laughs> didn't come across <laughs> is that why she's called Scotty <laughs> give over no but her teammates from Scotland call her Scotty no they don't they yeah, all they call do. her Rachel shut up no shut they up they call her Scotty too no well maybe because it's now just her full name her name I'm pretty sure it was given to her when she was playing hockey when she got, came to Loughborough because she was the Scottish one okay but everyone calls her Scotty even her Scottish teammates that's yeah, but like not everyone calling does. you Rosie because you're our red rose <laughs> I think I've just nicknamed you again. No, you nice. give over. I'm not a Rosie. <laughs> yeah. Look at me. No offence meant to any Rosies out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There we are, Rosie. What, what were we, we even talking about? Alex. Alex Matthews. So we've got a range of eight, six. She'd be my eight. She'd be your eight. She'd be my eight. Having played with her. Let's put her at eight. Put her at eight. We can shift it around once we start the proper discussions, Alex. Matthews. These are not proper discussions. Well, no, they are. But obviously, as soon as we get back to the back row, then you're going to throw out all these names and be like, "I know." It's just so hard. <laughs> <laughs> You've actually said it twice, so you owe me two pounds. <laughs> I've only said it once. Okay, so three bank. Uh, who else? Emma Orr. Emma, Emma Orr was a banker. Yeah. The other thing is, though, there's question mark over Meg Jones in that thirteen channel. Also, we're not picking ourselves. Oh yeah, we should say that. We're not obviously picking not picking ourselves. Yeah, because that's ridiculous. And also, we've just said that we're not in it. So, yeah, because you're going to be thirty-eight. Thirty-seven. <laughs> I was waiting for the nibble. Um, but everyone's picked Emma Orr. Yeah, Emma Orr. Class. I think by Meg, the and Meg will come into the twelve conversation. I think, won't she? Can we just discuss Emma Orr for a minute, though? Unreal. Unbelievable skill set. How old is she now? I th <sighs> Early twenties. Twenties. Yeah. I think the biggest thing for her. Like a lot of, say, the Welsh and the Scottish have come to the PWR to play their club rugby. So they're around, you know, really good teams and players constantly. She's obviously, n she hasn't done that. She's still studying um, up in Scotland. She's obviously played for Edinburgh in the Celtic Challenge recently. But imagine the development if she's playing more regularly, training more regularly. So we're already raving about her. We're but the top four team. No, I'm joking. Um, Emma, do not go to Gloucester. <laughs> I just think, for like, on that, she's such a home girl, and she, yeah. like, we've had conversations about it previously, not when I was in sevens with her um, for the training stuff, not because I'm trying to get to Gloucester Hartbury, but she just doesn't want to move away from home, and I just think she's just such a good Respect kid it. as well. So much time for it. But if but you I are agree. interested, Emma, I do have a farm close by that, <laughs> you know, you can, can make you feel homely if you... Um, if you need <laughs> and we live in a really rural place <laughs> okay we're putting her at 13 13 then. defo i think also imagine the excitement of her with someone like abby dow who's on everyone's list as well at 14 outsider that's, that's imagine that the banker unbelievable so good abby dow left or right wing or full back uh i'd go right wing i'd go right wing too. yeah 14 abby dow but she's been in everyone's she has right i think they're they're our bankers Jazzy J's been in most, but in different positions. Yeah, she has actually. Flakes as well. Was no. she a banker? She's in these two, not in yours. No, no, not 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 in mine. But I thought we I only circled five as bankers. Sorry, I didn't see the circles. Goodness. <laughs> so the bankers. That's why I've got the pen, mate. The bankers <laughs> are your opinion, are they? No, no. <laughs> we're up. doing this together. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed it beforehand. Uh, Did we? Brilliant. Right, you happy to go back to one? Yeah, let's go back. All right. Started from Bankers the Bankers are in. No, we're in. Okay. Number also, one. Do we need to have more conversation? Because I feel like this is really boring if you're listening to this. We need well, to have reasons why we're doing it. Maybe that will come up. Bloody up. good. Will I feel like the up? bankers speak for themselves because they're just bloody good. Yeah, fair. Okay, number one. So, a lot of people say in Gwen Thlian. Gwen Thlian was up there with me rogue had lindsay pete who's still playing from ireland fair just think unbelievable bots obviously hannah bots bottoman and el pairs i put in the mix as well oh <laughs> you can't just pick a gloucester heartbreak no, team but i think in two yeah all right fair enough <laughs> bots 
Gwen Lills. Um, it's between G- Bots and Gwen Lian, isn't it? Yeah, I think Scotty and Fionn have Gwen- gone Gwenny P. So, if we may call her that, that's what Fionn wrote. Gwenny P. Gwenny P. Gwen Lian is in at number one. Can we leave Hooker till last? Because I think that I is. I think Hooker's one of the toughest. Yeah, I agree. So let's move on. We've got our three. Zoe's at four. The other second row. <laughs> the other second row. The um, other one. We've had, so we've got Georgia Evans, Sam Monaghan. Scotty wants a disclaimer saying she has about six second rows <laughs> and she's tried not to be friend bias. Yeah. So we just need to. So we basically need to mention Bonner and Sarah Bonner and Emma Wassell. <laughs> yeah. Um, Beckett, Kath. Beckett, Rosie, Crab, Kath. Lou McMillan. It's actually madness, isn't it? Abby Ward, we haven't even mentioned Oh my her. God, we haven't even mentioned Abby Mozza. Ward. Mozza. I think, so she was mega in the big game, been mega all season. I think Sam Monaghan. She's got to be. Hell of a baller. Very good baller. Good line-out option. Just trying to think of the balance of the pack as well. Obviously, that's hugely important Pull to in. me. Okay. I think if we Sammy we're, Bill. Sa- <laughs> um, she Lini likes to be <laughs> Sonny Sammy. Sorry, this is actually really funny. So he was doing this pre-match against Saris and he tried to say Sam Monaghan, but he went Sam Monaghan. <laughs> we all just died. It was so good. And then he was like, Sonny Sammy, because we call her Sammy Bill. Oh, it was brilliant. Anyway, moving nice, on. Thanks Back for that, mate. Um... <laughs> <laughs> number six so s- we've got so we've got alex six and seven so we basically the back row and we're we're saying alex is already in so we've got sardia who is a just a menace obviously packer current world player of the year al cow's in there al cow you could look at georgia evans back there evie gallagher evie gallagher the she's been mega moena as well moena telling you've already mentioned her in second row Tricky. We are definitely missing people Cole as well. Cole Captain. Dorothy Wall. Scotty. Butchers. <laughs> Alicia Butchers. Dorothy Wall. Dove has been good, been out injured for a while. Oh, this is so hard, isn't it, Mo? <laughs> Don't. I'm not saying it. <laughs> I've literally got a banker. Um, so we've had... So what do you want from your seven? Do you want to fetch her? Yeah, you you need to get ball back, eh? I think you got to put Packer in or Al Cow then, haven't you? So we've had Fionn... She wants Marley and Al Cow both in, even though she knows they both play seven. She wants them both on the field. She does. That's her disclaimer. Sadia for me though, she is. Were you? She's unreal. Her? I. This is not the point of what we're doing, but in three years' time, she's going to be ridiculous. And Marley's our age, not to retire her to early or anything, but but oh. we're not doing. That's not what we're doing. We're, we're doing, doing it that. as if we're playing tomorrow. Are we allowed to pick Scotty? Of course we're allowed. What do you mean? Because we weren't picking ourselves, but. I'd put Scotty in there just because I think she galvanises a team the way she leads. She's a workhorse. You need a workhorse. So you want Scotty and Marley? Marley or Sards, I'd say, with Alex. So you're leaving out <sighs> Al Cow. Can we move on? Georgia Evans, <laughs> Moena, Sardia, oh. Beckett, Poppy. every other person that I've forgotten to mention, Evie Gallagher. Evie Gallagher. This is actually nuts, it's isn't it? It's so hard, mate. Just close your eyes, point to one and put it in. Right, we said we want to fetch her at seven. So that's Al Cal or Marley. Go. Marley's world player of the year. You've got to put Marley in. Evie could this play six. This is my worst nightmare. Sorry. But my heart just hurts because I'm like, <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want anyone to get sad. <laughs> I don't want anyone to feel like they've missed out and that we judge Mate, them. we're not actually picking the team, my no, dear. No, I know, but like genuinely, <laughs> I feel the pressure. No, I know, but that's why we did this disclaimer at the top. Okay. And also, this is encouraging people to do their own, to appreciate how much your heart is hurting right now. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Right, come on. Right, Sadia, Alcal or Scotty, Scotty for me? Scotty's the only genuine six out of those three. Chuck her in. And also, sorry, the Sage Opta stats Jeez. from the last four <laughs> year Six Nations. Can we talk about that? Okay, backed up by stats. Love yeah, that. Well done, Mo. Stats. Good. She's in. Uh, I'm also, just writing Scotty. Sorry, I I know I don't want to blow your trumpet very often, but you literally didn't play the Six Nations last year and it was done on the last four Six Nations, including the men's, and you still made it. I think that's amazing. What did I make it for? I haven't seen stats. it. Stats. It's, it's on like, it's done over a hundred stats. 
from the men's and women's Six Nations over the last four years. Oh, right. Obviously, for you, last three years, because you haven't played in two, so that doesn't work out. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Um, but yeah, hmm. unbelievable. Very but cool. Scotty also made it, so I think she's got to be considered for that because obviously the workhorse element, boom. The kind of the Richard done. Hill role. Yeah. Just doing bits. But also, the way she leads, I think, is epic. And you probably need a bit of, like, you obviously need leadership on there as well. Class. Anyway, moving on. Moving on. Nine. So, notable shout out to old sidekick Mo over here <laughs> because actually a lot of people have put you down, but we can't pick you, so you're out. Um... And you're going to be 38, so... Lucy P. Kira, I'm moving on from that comment yeah, very fine. quickly. Lucy P. or oh. Kira Bevan? Yeah, for me. Yeah. We've had no help from our friends. No, nothing. Um, because they all picked you. That's nice, though. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we go... What do you want? Oh, they're both good. I, I think, think start strong with a kicking game. Go Kira. Kira. Bring Lucy but on. But also she can kick off two, depending on who you put in at 10. Very true. Very, very consistent. Off and the also team. if we some how they change all the rules and it comes down to a penalty shootout be Boom. great to have her there another kicker then we need lana at hooker <laughs> <laughs> okay we're Go. skipping uh Perfect. kira bevan nice oh that was good 10 oh my goodness 10 oh, we've obviously got zoe harrison holly Clakes. nelly Clakey george no do that i appreciate again. that you tried Clakey that george. i can't I just can't roll like Clakey. that Clakey. Um, Meg could play there Hell could play there because also we don't have to pick people where other people are playing them at yeah, the moment yeah true um, I think it's I think it's Flakes I think it's between Flakes Zoe and Hall based on our collective input yeah it's Flakes it's Flakes because if we pick both Scotty and Fionn have gone for her and she's in both of our mix as well yeah <sighs> Come on, we need to keep the ship moving. Right. Ship, that was. If anyone just didn't quite hear the pronunciation. <laughs> do you want to go wing or do you want to go 12? Let's go 12. Okay, 12. So we've got Emma Orr at 13. Mm -hmm. You've got Flakes at 10. Right. So the What issue, do we need in the middle? The issue that we've got with 12 is both Fionn and Scotty have put two in at 12. Yeah, they've really And I've got a list of quite a few. And two at 13. Because you've also... So the two that they've gone, Meg Jones, Holly A., Meg Jones slash Hollier, Helen Rowland slash Helen Nelson, brackets, one of the dogs. Guess who wrote that? <laughs> I think you've also got, this isn't just because they're roster. Tat. Karen, for me, is one of the most underrated players. She is unbelievable. Tomo's in the mix. Meryl Smith, I We think. haven't even mentioned Hannah Jones at 13 either. We just bam straight, Emma all straight in there. Wow. But that's because we had help from our friends. But yeah, <coughs> she um, is class. Eve Higgins as well from Ireland. Yeah. Hell Row, it was in my mix for 13. But anyway, I digress. Hell Row in the mix for 15? Yeah, we can come back to that. Um, 12. So you've got Flakes, great kicker of the ball, great distributor. You need someone going hard for, for me. Emma Orr on that lovely outside, outside arc. Outside break, yeah. I think you need a hard running distribute in 12. So what's that give us? Meg or Tat? Yeah, I'd Tomo? say. Tomo? You haven't spoken about Tom Lisa Thompson. No, I just mentioned. Oh, did you? I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomo as well. Meg Tat or Tomo for me. I think you go Meg. She is. She does ignite. Because also, then you've got that really nice second um, playmaker that's just going to bounce around and go mental. <sighs> and also, at the moment, she's top in stats. Top she's in stats in a team, team of the that's bottom of the league. She told me the other day she's in team of the week every week. I thought she told you that. Shut up, mate. Maybe she's not in the team then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a tough call between her and Tat for me. But, right, base, but based on yep. what our friends have helped us with, they've both mentioned Meg in and around, just in different positions. So I think we have to put her in. We now need left wing, left wing, and a fullback. <laughs> so I think Jazz has got to be in it. It's just where you put her. Yep. I think you put her on the left wing. I think at fifteen against New Zealand, I think you need a. Um, Obviously a good runner of the ball, but I also think you need a kick return option. Yeah. Just throw into that mix as well, Fran McGee. Yeah. Agree. She was... So this is winger now we're talking, yeah? Yeah, we're talking winger. You've got... <laughs> Rachel Malcolm has actually Roney. put a few options and then in brackets, don't make me pick. Yeah. Roney, Fran McGee, Jess Breach, Claude, 
Bavin Parsons, Amy Lee Murphy Crow. Did you say Breachy? Breachy, yeah. Carnage. Jazz. Jazzy has to Jazz has made everybody else's team in so, in a in, in some, some way. position. And I think also where how she played against New Zealand out in New Zealand, she she was like a one man band. She was just banging everything. <laughs> we were watching, I was going mental in the stands. Perfect. And also <laughs> hell of a tourist. She'd be a good she tourist. She is such good value. She'd be a good tourist. Right. Fifty oh we've got still gotta go back to Hooker. Right, keep this keep this moving. Fifteen. Ellie Kay. Helena Rowland, I think we've put back in that. Um Chloe, Chloe Rowley. Rowley. Kaylee Powell. Rowley. Kaylee Powell. Courtney Keat. I think if you're going like lightning, probably the only thing that I think Ellie has over Chloe a little bit more so would be that kicking element yeah. to her game. Like Chloe doesn't kick as much. And if it's you think she just skins everyone when she runs, so she doesn't yeah, need to. Yeah, it's true. I felt like it's <laughs> unbelievable. Um, oh, we've had a few Ellie Ellie Ks on the on the other notes as well. Ellie K. Yeah, go Done. for it. Right, right. hooker. Hoo <sighs> Should we just put these in a hat? So Lana, Amy, Lark, Kels, Kelsey, Neve, Karis Phillips, Karis Phillips, Connie. That's seven. What do you want from your hooker? Balance of the front row as well. Massive. Because I think you've got Gwenny P that's going to run over everything and just hit anything in sight. Berna, who's got that power, but also that silky skills. Not saying Gwenny P doesn't, but she's probably more of your direct. Berna with the link. Do you want somebody but that's again, it's how you play the game, because so often hookers would end up in that outside channel, wouldn't they? True that. So then I'm I'd leaning, want Amy Cocaine I'm there. leaning to Amy. I am leaning to Amy Cocaine But we're well. obviously slightly English biased and we just spent the weekend with her. Yeah. <laughs> Disclaimer. I don't even know how you pick this one. I think it's Amy. I'm actually going to say Amy. All right, Amy. Congrats, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Good tourist too. Good tourist. Whew. Right, 1 to 15. Are you ready? Are you reading it out? Uh, did I you write it down? It. I didn't write it down, but okay. I think I know it. I've just drawn on my trousers. Ready? Okay, number one, Gwen Thlian. This guy's doing it. Number two, Amy Cocaine. Number three, Sarah Byrne. Number four, Zoe Allcroft. Number five, Sam Monaghan. Six, Rachel Malcolm. Seven, Marley Packer. Eight, Alex Matthews. Nine, Kira Bevan. Ten, Clakey George. Eleven, Jazz Joyce. Butchers. Which way around are they now? Jazz Joyce Moon. Butchers. Joyce Butchers. Sorry, sorry, Jazzy. Twelve, Meg Jones. Thirteen, Emma Orr. Fourteen, Abby Dow. Fifteen, Ellie Kildun. Who's your captain? Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got 30 more minutes to figure that out. We haven't even done the bench as well. The bench that would be nails. Strong. It'd be unreal. Wow. Think of all the people we've left out there as well. Sorry, everyone. We're so sorry. But also, genuinely, try and do this because it is so hard. Yeah, and let us know. Yeah. In a nice way. We'll put way. something on the old social media. <laughs> The old? None of the old social media get involved. You crease me. Gosh. Okay. Are we happy with that? Cecilia. We didn't even mention Cecilia. Oh, my goodness. No, we can't change it now. Sis, no. you are unbelievable. You know how much I love you. Wow. She'll be super sub. Wow, wow, wow. Or Maud. Maudy. See, this is what happens. You need... Yeah. So yeah sorry, move on. Anyway. We'll locked in. Literally be here for hours. Nice. If we're not dwelling on it, can we swap, stop dwelling on yeah, it, please? Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, sorry. No worries. Um, before we finish, we need to talk about the Empower Her project. <laughs> sorry, I've been Good one. so many times <laughs> about how I say that. It's not Empower Her, it's Empower Her. Play on words. Amazing. She's with us. So the whole thing, connecting uni rugby um, to the elite game. KDM and Alma sat down with Ella and Margot, Crazy Cat Lady, and here's a little snippet of what they got up to in Durham. Who's Crazy Cat Lady? Margot? No. <laughs> Yes, we're in the Maiden Castle facility. It has a different name on Google Maps, but they <laughs> insist on calling it Maiden Castle. Yeah, no, MC, yeah. shorten MC. even more. It's um, The maidens are not the ones playing the rugby, right? <laughs> no, no. Oh, God. And we are joined by very important people. If 
if they had little brass plaques on the parking spaces outside, then these two names would have been on there. Ella Mirfield, the club captain, and a sports science final year student, and Margot Julia, first team captain and sponsorship officer and computer science final year <laughs> student. Yep. That is a tall order. Ella and Margot, thank you so much for joining us. Katie Daly-McLean is here as well. We're in your neck of the woods, so you just pop out from wherever, whatever <laughs> we're up Behind north. a tree, you know. <laughs> She's just, just loitering. Is she here often? She, we can't get rid of her. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. I, I heard you brought the whole family down earlier and almost gate crashed us. Yeah, we we're going to gate crash your session, but I tried to put on my professional face, you know. You looked very <laughs> focused in there. There were people um, door stopping you as you came in and everyone has just wanted to have a slice of Katie. <laughs> Katie, you should come by and host a session for us. Katie, let me know whenever you'd like to host a clinic. The boys could definitely learn from you. <laughs> yeah, this is the closest I would ever get to this university though. <laughs> Being invited back. Is that, is yeah, that it? that's a true fact. Oh. True fact. Okay, well, thank you so much for making the, the journey. Thank you. It's good to be in your in your area here. You girls have been so impressive to deal with. What is your um, what does your academic record look like, and how were you balancing all of these? Uh, I think these at least things? once a week, because I text you and go, Margot, we have got degrees to do. Can we, yeah. can we focus on that instead of <laughs> the rugby? Um, yeah. Degrees tend to come second, even though they shouldn't <laughs> technically. But um, this club is a big thing for us, and we really care a lot for it, and we want to make sure it works a lot, no matter all the troubles we've had this year. Now we need to talk about Katie's contribution to this uh, big effort that you girls put in. <laughs> uh, so we brought her here. The Empower uh, project, of course, is about more than just mentorship and bursary. Yeah. It's also skills. Mm -hmm. um, how did she? How did she fare out there? How did uh, Margot? You were in the thick of it. There. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed that session. You? <laughs> I've been glaring at her for the last five minutes. Just yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, no, it's, it was a really positive session because um, especially I think because we've struggled with just finding a coach, we've also not really have back specific kind of training, kicking being a big one. We have a lot of girls who kind of know how to kick a ball, but technically don't know what they're doing that much. So I think having that session there with our primary kickers, really making sure we understand where we might be able to improve in our usual technique but also then having all the backs in and then getting them to kind of learn how to grubber, learn how to chip and chase, things like that. That was really useful and just so enjoyable. Aww. Isn't that nice? <laughs> now, you guys have the largest women's rugby program in the UK and you're the first backs team to have a third team as yeah. well now. So your numbers are massive. Yeah. You're obviously doing something right, although at the same time, you're at the bottom of the league table right now after 2019. Yeah. Small deals. Small <laughs> after 2019, which was a really big and important year because you yeah. went unbeaten, mm -hmm. you played at Twickenham. Talk me through what is happening at the moment and where is this trend heading? We're kind of in like a restructuring phase. So obviously we've had those couple of years of really successful um, rugby and really doing well in the leagues and winning leagues. Um, now we've kind of had a switch over in head coach. We're kind of in this restructuring program also with the loss of DMP, kind of trying to recreate the program. So it's now it's solid and we can then in the future hope to hit titles again and hit the top of the league again, um, especially with the fresher we've got this year they're really great so we're hoping to create a really good program this year for them so that in two years time they've got the potential to hit at the top of the league oh, wow so you guys are really putting the foundations in yeah. place now for something that you probably won't see yeah yeah <laughs> we both leave this year so it's yeah sort of looking it's hard to look ahead because a lot of our team we've got half teams freshers and half teams third year fourth year so mm. they probably won't see mm. the sort of benefit do you think this is going to have a big impact on your recruitment going forward because obviously the the weight of having a DMP, a premiership club for those younger, or even those mature who want yeah. to come back to university, want to come back yeah. into education. Yeah. How do you guys see that affecting you and the university side? Yeah, it's basically recruitment wise, we're not getting as much experienced players. And if it weren't for the collegiate system in Durham, we'd be probably lacking in players a lot. Mm, um, so it's, it's that struggle of bringing in experienced players that can help carry teams, but also just like, I mean, we're the, in the north of England. If you want to play Prem and you want to play England, you're probably going to go south because there are Prem teams there. You can keep developing and then you can be found and seen by England. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Edinburgh have Scotland, Cardiff have Wales, but we're just kind of up here competing against the southern teams that don't that have Prem teams yeah. in which England mm -hmm. can look at. 
What's interesting to me is Colin, your team manager, mm -hmm. who was down uh, pitch side <laughs> kicking the balls back when Katie was leading the session. That's the most he's done in the training session in a long time. <laughs> he was very engaged. We yeah. love right. Colin. Uh, we love his dog, Eddie. I heard all about his wife, who's a nurse. Um, but Colin also told me that his daughter played mm -hmm. and she was part of that 2019 team. Yeah. And he said that the women's program here, pre and post COVID, mm -hmm. has pretty much doubled. Yeah from what it was. And on the men's side, it's halved. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see this um, massive growth mm. that you guys have obviously been presiding over because your influence here is undeniable. <laughs> um, but it also bodes well for the future, which is why mm. the Empower program and the, the contribution that we are now bringing to this project makes me so excited because it feels like there's real momentum building structurally what is the thing that on a day-to-day -day basis is the most interesting? Is it the Player Connect software? I think so. I think that helps our, like, the communication levels. It's hard to communicate with a girl, like a team full of girls that have a degree to do. Some of them are fed up of watch, getting our WhatsApp messages through. They're absolutely sick. I'm pretty sure we've been muted on quite a few people's phones. <laughs> but <laughs> they are fed up. But just sort of having, like, be able to not tell your coach you're injured. It's like, so basically... The, what we like the most is where you've got like, the images of the bodies and you can click which parts are sore. So that, that goes to our S&C coach. He knows that he's too hamstring heavy one week. Or like girls who've got reoccurring injuries, they're like, oh, it still hurts. And then Andy, our physio, can be like, okay, come and see me at this time. And without having to constantly go to your coach, go to your physio, for then your physio to talk to your coach. And it just cuts down that communication so much that it's all in one place. You know who's fit to play. You know if they're available to play. It's, it's so streamlined, it makes our lives it so much easier. It ties everything really yeah. together. Additionally, the girls can track their menstrual cycles. And I think yeah. it's very big because not a lot of girls know the impact of a menstrual, menstrual yeah. cycle on performance. And when you get to uni and you play high performance, mm. it's something you need to take into account. And I mean, it's mm. something, it took me two years of going to the gym to understand, oh, that's why every month I struggle to lift. Yeah because it's not something we know a lot about and having it on Player Connect is huge for us to kind of also educate our girls on yeah. things like that. Yeah. And if you're new here, it's purpose-built player monitoring software. This technology is aimed at improving a player's performance mm -hmm. um, and it's one of the shining stars in the project that we've built with Vodafone. This is the same software that the Welsh women's team use. It is absolutely industry standard, state-of-the-art stuff. I think from a an elite performance perspective as well generally you have to get to an international level to get all of this mm. you might have a google form that gets submitted to somebody else that you yeah. never get to see but actually the power that gives you as an athlete to be able to mm. say like you say connect the dots my, my sleep my menstrual cycle i haven't maybe eaten well i haven't lifted well for a period of time mm. there'll be markers in there that mm. start to give you more awareness of your own body so not just mm for now in your university career, but as you yeah. go into the world of yeah. work and however yeah. your sporting journey takes you, I think mm. the importance of that is huge. And the flip side, what the power gives your coaches. Yeah. So coaches to know that maybe everybody's a bit stressed, yeah. how that changes your session, how that changes their approach and their planning to the session as well. Yeah. It's huge yeah. for everybody to be, like you say, connected. It's a really easy way for the girls to sort of communicate how they're feeling, how stressed they are without having to pull the coach aside, have a conversation, pull us aside, mm. have a conversation. The small stuff it. is so valuable, yeah. I think, in team sports as well, those are corridor conversations. Yeah. And again, knowledge is power, isn't mm -hmm. it? So like you say, your coach knows that. It's like, oh, Elma, like, don't worry today because we've yeah. seen you look a little bit, take it easy. Like yeah. those kind of things huge. in terms of, little bits of performance are, are huge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, it's that bridging the gap between elite sport and the way it's done at elite level mm -hmm. and bringing all of that knowledge and understanding and experience mm -hmm. in, in very real terms all the way back into yeah. uni. Not because you are playing professional sport here, but because you want to give yourself every opportunity to be the best athlete yeah. you can be right now. Yeah. And wh whatever that leads to next is, you know, that's a future you problem. But at the yeah. moment, we just want to ensure that we support the process well enough, which is why I'm really, really interested in the mentoring program because mm. I've, I remember so clearly being 21 and landing my first TV job mm. and saying to my boyfriend at the time, now my husband, I wish there was someone, there were two or three women I really admired who I, I, I met in that first year. And all three of them held me at quite overtly at arm's length. Yeah. And I was so crushed and disappointed by this because I was desperate for a mentor. I was desperate for someone I could just have a conversation with about the specific challenges 
of that phase of coming into the working world and understanding how much of this is a me problem and how much of this is an industry problem. Yeah. I think the th with two girls we've chosen, Kenzie and Rosie, are uh, freshers this year, and they just are absolutely outstanding players. Like, not even not even just on the pitch. They are very, very good at rugby, and they have both played before. Kenzie's from the North East, Rosie's from Exeter, but they just, off the pitch, they give 100%. Like, they'll always be in the gym. They're always lifting as much as they can. Rosie was in, in the content creation um, <laughs> session, and she had an exam 15 yeah. minutes later. And yeah. I told, I like, if it was me, if I had an exam 15 minutes later, I wouldn't have gone. I'd be focusing on that. Yeah. But she puts in 100% effort yeah. all the time yeah. and she shows up to everything mm. whenever. And if yeah. she can't show up because <laughs> she has an exam, then she apologizes like crazy. I'm like, like, don't no, apologize. You've got, you've got a degree but to do. But it's because she cares so much yeah. and she puts in her all. So and in the gym, she'd never, she'd never properly lifted before and now she can bench 60 kilos and we're all stood there like, whoa, where should she whip that one out from? But yeah, yeah she's just, and Kenzie's the same. I've got Rosie. She's just insane. Whoa, right. <laughs> Rosie. Rosie is stacked. Oh, Rosie. Yeah. If I'd known, I wouldn't have gone over on their yeah. content session. How was that? How was your content session? Well, I don't know. How was it? Yeah, Would you give it? me a score? <laughs> give it out of 10. It was, um, ooh, out of 10. Right. Did I win? <laughs> it was better. Well, I'm a bit biased. So I like kicking a ball, so I always yeah. go with the kicking stuff. I'll go 9.5. <laughs> But yeah. it, it was good to meet Georgia, though, who runs yeah. the socials for you girls yeah. here at Georgia's the club. Uh, she made the mistake of listening to Ella and coming over and <laughs> sitting down. She was like, I don't want to say hi. I was like, no, you're coming with me. You haven't got a choice. I'm going to sit you down. Yeah, she she came over with a really, really big smile on her face. And I think I think this opportunity, even though we're getting all the money and we're getting the, the program, we're getting the mentoring, just sort of being here and teaching the skills and having this experience of a media day, the girls are like, oh, my God, we're in front of a camera. They're like, oh, what can I say on a mic? But they're enjoying themselves so much. And I think we never usually have this many people sat in MC for such a long period of time. They're like, oh, what can we do? Can we do to help? And it's <laughs> it's nice for the girls to see what like top level rugby could be. And do you think that maybe is potentially what's going to set you apart from like the yeah. university sport and giants, the, yeah. the Loughboroughs, the Harbreys who have resource yeah. and, yeah, and everything? Have, yeah. yeah, lots of paid coaches and lots yeah. of local clubs. I think it does. And I think the opportunity to do this is absolutely brilliant yeah. because it sets us apart. It gives us something to go. Actually, no, you consider next to okay, but have you looked at what we've got here and look at the app we've got and look at all the stuff we've got like access to and the gyms and everything else. And it's just sort of adding to that package over and over again. And while Durham's a great uni, it's sort of adding the rugby side of it. Also, um, you know, the last time we had a video media shoot kind of thing was two, three years ago. Yeah. So as sponsorship, I I would attach the video link, but then it's a bit old, you know. <laughs> None of the so girls it's are like, here anymore. <laughs> it would, it, it's going to be really um, important and really yeah. nice for us to be able to go, oh, um, would you want to sponsor us? Look mm. at this content, look at the Empower Her content. Uh, like whole event and all this media that we've just created today and it's going to be really big to yeah. kind of show that to people to hopefully get them because they, ultimately and this is the things we can't hide from with there not being a premiership side mm. it is harder to recruit yeah. northern young talent up here mm -hmm. whether it's from elsewhere or to keep northern talent from going yeah. south like you've touched on yeah. so i think for you guys, the mm. challenge becomes even harder because it was a big sell having a premiership side. Not having yeah. that now means the university has to sell itself. Yeah. And it'd be such a shame for people to not come and experience the amazing mm. set yeah. up this place as the city itself and the Northeast. What would this have meant to you? Babe? If baby Katie was here now, I mean, imagine. Did I have to study here? Well, I mean. <laughs> Do we ignore that bit? Well, we don't, we don't okay, have to fine. talk about the academics, but I mean, <laughs> if baby Katie was 19 now, I mean, imagine. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? I look at like your setup, your gym, the pitches you have access to. That's pretty much what we use at an international mm. and what the girls have at elite level club now. Like for this to be your base, I think I started yeah. to learn to lift just before I hit uni. So I was just starting my like weights and to have this quality in my university where I didn't have to travel. I didn't have to, had qualified coaches. Mm. We had to, I went from probably traveled about 40 minutes to go and see a proper coach who would support yeah. my Olympic lifting. So I think all of this just, just keeps to making the gap mm. closer, doesn't it? It just gets you ready for professional rugby so much quicker yeah. and having really good fundamental base. It's huge, yeah. yeah. I've got a bit walking around now. I'm very, very <laughs> envious. I we'll have you any time, just, just come back. <laughs> I'm so buzzing for the journey that will be going on with you guys um, and particularly ro working with Rosie and with Kenzie. 
Um, but also just to see other bright stars like Georgia mm -hmm. uh, coming through in the industry in other ways, you know, like on the pitch, but also developing yeah. their skill set yeah. um, and making use of every opportunity that comes across. It's so lovely to see that people put literally their heart and soul into this club and it means so much to so many people, even bar us with everybody else. It is just absolutely incredible and everybody pulls together. We've been through a really rough period, but we're still very happy, everybody's very happy, and we pull together when it really sort of hits home. And, so. and it's going back up now. It is we've we've gone through the hard period, we've now got yeah. a coach, and we're really looking forward to the rest of the season now. Yeah. I'm so glad they started playing rugby. <laughs> 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 I just had a moment now where I'm like, oh, it's good, we've got them. Okay. <laughs> the future is fine, it's okay. <laughs> we're good, amazing. Thank you so much, girls. Thank, Thank you, you for having, having us. How cute is that? Yeah, so cute. Just. I mean, they're so appreciative, aren't they? You can tell they're obviously Northern Rugby struggling a little bit. So good to get Katie up there. She's so passionate about it. Yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, have you got any of yours in the diary yet? I've not been. Yeah. We've not been able to sort ours yet. I was going to think post Six Nations, we'll all head up to Edinburgh, which I'm very much looking forward to. I'm going to Katie my way up there. Class all the way up. <laughs> all the way up. Yeah, we'll I get reckon. footage of that. Hundred <laughs> percent. Valentine's Day, I'm going down. Oh, lush. Yeah, going to be a oh. little love fest. So hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully there is appreciation. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's meant to be about, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I just love everyone. Um, heart balloons and everything coming your way. Love that. Um, on that bombshell, good luck, Cardiff. Um, <laughs> we've been the Good Discuss of the Rugby. The good Discuss of the Rugby is a folding pocket production produced by Old Shira Kilgallen. Kilgallen.